Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It seems fitting that our Lord Jesus Christ is buried in a garden. And that, most likely, below Golgotha, the place of the skull. There, in that newly carved tomb, the new Adam seems to have met his end. The promise given in paradise that the seed of woman would crush the serpent's skull. It seems that in doing so, that he would have his heel crushed. But the long-expected Jesus was more than crushed. He was crucified. Satan won the battle. The seed of woman, now lifeless, useless, is laid into an empty grave. The curse of death is so strong. Eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you will surely die. It is even killed the Son of God, God himself. Hopes are dashed, dreams are destroyed, and so it is that the women come to the tomb. Where is Job's certainty? I know that my Redeemer lives. Mary Magdalene had hope. Jesus gave it to her. Not only did he cast out her demons, he restored her. He cleansed her. He took away that stigma from her life. But now Jesus is gone. Will the old things return? The other women had the same hope of Mary, but that hope is snuffed out like a candle. And so it is that they join the procession to the grave, that procession that we're all marching in right now. They are prepared with spices to anoint Jesus' body and then wrap that which is mortal with cloth, thus clothing the perishable with a perishable garment. That is the way it is for us, Adam's son, Eve's daughters. Only Enoch and Elijah got out alive. And if this is what happens to the Son of God, what shall happen to us? Arriving at the tomb, the women face that which also seems impossible. There's the stone. Who will roll it away? It is too large, too heavy too difficult, as great as death itself. The stone is there for a good reason. It's placed there so that the one whose body that has been swallowed up by death would at least have that body protected by the very creature, from the very creatures of creation who would attempt to swallow it up. Grisly but true. That is the way of nature, the way of law, the way of death. Then the women encounter that which is truly impossible. Not that the stone is rolled away, but the message of the angel who preaches to them the gospel. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. You see how God works, pointing to signs. It's not surprising. The flood ends with a sign. The rainbow, I will not flood the earth again. That event with the Israelites being bitten by fiery serpents ends with a sign. A bronze serpent lifted up upon the pole. Christ's birth is announced with the sign. Look for the one in swaddling clothes and laid into a manger. God's always working through signs. The angel notes that this new Adam, the true man, Jesus of Nazareth, who bore your human frame, who even now bears it, though he was crucified, though his body was mortal and perishable, He has now arisen from the grave's dark prison. That which was mortal has been clothed with immortality. That which is perishable is now imperishable. Look to the signs in his hands and his feet and his side and you can see the truth. The victim is now the victor, their redeemer, your redeemer, lives. Christ is risen. And then what? The women are to go and tell. It's the gospel proclamation that is to be taken out into the entire world. The angel was the first messenger, just as at the birth of Christ. Now, instead of using shepherds to announce to the world glory to God and peace to his people on earth, instead he uses these women to announce glory to God and peace to you. So it is then the work of every Christian, not just these women, not just Peter and James and John and the rest of the apostles, but all of us. For every single one of us has hopes that are dashed, dreams that are destroyed, And we need those replaced by true hope. The world is a frightening place, so the women are not only astonished and frightened, but for a while they are silenced. They are not silenced forever. They go forth proclaiming that message of salvation. But our flesh and the world work against us to silence us. They attempt to take hope from us. But just as Jesus has risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, that hope still finds its way here. We still see it in the signs placed before us. For where is Christ's body, habeas corpus? Produce it, and our hope is in vain. But Christ has arisen. He's ascended to the Father. He lives 
he reigns, and yet today he comes to this place. He comes here to this new garden. You see it, don't you? The tree behind Christ there pointing to this new tree of life. This is not the place of the skull. No, this is not that mountain where Christ was crucified, but the new mountain Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. And that which is mortal has already been clothed with that which is immortal. That happened to you in your baptism. There at that font, perhaps you were clothed with Christ. You put on the imperishable so that this it perishable body may one day be laid into the ground as a seed. It is not a, a useless seed. But instead, just as Christ rose from the dead, that seed planted in the ground bearing much fruit, so also you, though planted in the ground, shall come forth. Christ, the first fruits from the dead will call you forth from the grave. Now, here at this altar, your great high priest feeds you with his imperishable, immortal body and blood to sustain you. For this life is hard. He comes here to cleanse you, for you know your sins, they are ever before you. He comes to restore you. For the old man must die and the new man must be brought forth. So lay down your dashed hopes. Lay down your destroyed dreams. And receive the true hope of Christ as he gives to you his victory, for he has taken the sting of death, which is sin. He has dealt with all of it. And he's also fulfilled the entirety of the law for you. And he's given to you something that's far better than any mortal, perishable dream. He has given to you himself. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord.